All right, we have gotten started. Let's see, I see Judy has posted a question. Question, what are the signs of dating a man with an overinflated ego and what are the concerns a woman should have if she finds herself in this dynamic? Also, is this actually an insecurity from him? So, great question, overinflated ego. I can relate to that. I have an overinflated ego at times. Now, I happen to be aware of my overinflated ego. When a person is in their overinflated ego, it's oftentimes me, 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 or I, 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 I. It's all about them. And it's because if you're not familiar with uh, Tony Robbins, the six human needs, one of the most important needs of every human being is significance, is significance. We need to feel significant. This is one of the reasons why Instagram was invented, sadly, is because human beings are thirsty for significance. And a person with an overinflated ego doesn't love on themselves enough, so they need to project even more so. This is why selfies in you know, Instagram are you know, habitually a need to say, look at me, look at me, look at me. Here's the problem with someone who has an overinflated ego. It's exhausting to be in relationship with a person who has an overinflated ego. And ultimately, if you find an imbalance, in other words, their ego is here and you're here, and you feel that imbalance, it's going to feel very, that space in between is going to feel very dramatic and very exhausting. So you have to ask yourself, is this person right for me? Can this person heal from this? Here's the thing about healing, folks. They have to do it on their own time. I'm going to tell you something. So let me just give you a personal example of this. This is a great question. I did something called the Insight Seminars. I want you to Google Insight Seminars. I did the one out of Los Angeles. And I did, uh, there's Insight 1, 2, 3. I, and during Insight 2, we were introduced something called our limiting character, our limiting character. And what that is, is this is the part of our personality. Do I have that book on personality? This is the part of our personality that is the part of us that we don't like. And what I realized within my personality is I have some, I, I, you had to first give your personality a nickname. So I nicknamed my personality Stupid Righteous Jack. Stupid Righteous Jack. OK, so let me explain this. The reason why I called him Jack is because Jack is a sin or is another name for John. I believe JF, John, uh, John F, uh, JFK was also nick, nicknamed Jack. So I called my I'm Jonathan or John. So I called myself Jack. And the stupid righteous part is that when I'm feeling rather stupid, in other words, when I do something stupid or I feel inferior to other human beings, and I feel even remotely like I know about something, I turn into a know-it-all. I turn into a pontificator. I become rather righteous, hence stupid righteous Jack. This is what happens in my personality. And I've reached a point in my life now where I can recognize that he's come out and I can learn to reel him back in. So whenever I'm pontificating beyond my YouTube channel, because my YouTube channel is all about my 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 um, presentation and, and my righteousness, if you will. That's just my style. But when I'm doing this in my interpersonal relationships with people and I catch myself pontificating, it's kind of fascinating. I had this happen uh I did a seminar two years ago before COVID. And I remember I was talking to a group of people afterwards and about Five minutes in the conversation, my brain was saying, I am totally pontificating here. I'm being very righteous. So I stopped and explained. I was become I became radically honest to the two women I was talking about. What was interesting is they didn't perceive it that way, but I could tell I was in that mode of stupid, righteous Jonathan or Jack. So coming back to this, I had to do the healing on my own. And here's the thing, in your particular case, um, who was the question that asked that, Judy? You can't heal someone else. They've got to do it on their own. And if it's something that weighs on the relationship so much that you find him to be less attractive, remember going back to the relationship iceberg, chances are you're not feeling attraction at an emotional maturity level. And that will most likely mean that the relationship will mostly 
melt away using the iceberg analogy. It will mostly melt away. So my invitation for you is to look inward and say, how do I truly feel about this? And then make a choice because if it's not the right person for you, then you might have to consider moving on. Judy, thank you.